Hey people, this is Jen. I hope everybody's good. Uh, I'm a psychic medium energy healer and I said I had a surprise. So here I am with my surprise. I'm with Colin. Say hi. Hello, everyone. Colin is a client of mine and he became my friend. He's also a twin, just like a lot of us listening. So thank you for being here. And we decided to do a video together so that we can have um, a man talking about his experience. So yeah. Colin, do you want to say something about... Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I, uh, I don't know what everyone wants to hear. And because um, I could talk for, you know, if I, especially if I got in the zone, I could talk for so long about you know, the emotions and the feelings and just like all of these synchronicities that w had never happened before and that were like so almost impossible, even if I was skeptical, which I'm, which I, in terms of spiritual things, I'm not skeptical really because of my past experiences, but I was already very spiritual, paying very close attention. And when I met her, it was just like craziness. I mean, I'm a different human being than I was in, this is August now, 2017. And I met her in, in April, and it was just like, there's so much I could talk about. It's just like, I mean, it's a win-win across the board, just like the transformation, everything. But um, I really don't know because I'm not, I'm going to tell the truth right off the bat. I'm not with her yet, even though, uh, even though the first night, I believe she likes me, but she, I mean, she was telling me she was liking me. It's a good problem to have that she, that she was like me so much she's afraid, right? Now, I think a lot of people... Right. Might, might have that problem, but that's a much better problem, in my, in my opinion. Most twins, I would say. Most twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, what's going Yeah, the, basically the first night, by the end of the night, we were together. It was just like, you know, I was like, there were, mo there were things I had said. It was like, one thing I said, it's like, doesn't it feel like we've been doing this for 10 years? And she's like, yeah, da, da, da. And then basically by the end of the night, she started like collapsing almost like emotionally and she was trying to run away at different times. I'm like, what, what's the problem? You know, she's, we're walking together like we've known each other our whole lives, arm in arm, hand in hand, kissing, just like everything just so, so wonderful. And I wasn't really worried about it really, but I can be very like romantic and kind of like passionate. And, and she was falling in a sense of like being unstable more than I was and I did not realize that until later and I think she uh she told me by the end of the night which I respected so much she's like I'm, I was like what is it you know what is it because she kept throwing these little things she didn't like I was smoking a cigarette and I was like I don't usually smoke cigarettes but if I wanted to smoke I was gonna smoke a cigarette you know anyway my point is she was throwing all these little kind of getting mad at me for all these little things but it wasn't that she was actually getting mad at me what it was was that she was frustrated with the amount of emotion she was feeling mm -hmm. And she didn't know. The intensity was just too much. Yeah, yeah. And we talked about that. You yeah. know, and, uh, and I felt that. It was like I was getting, I mean, I've gotten visions, like just just like spiritual awakenings and visions yeah. and things that were like, yeah. insane, never happened before. And this all happened like in the weeks, in the months following me let, meeting her. Let me ask you this. Did you know anything about Twin Flames before meeting her? Yeah, okay. So what the crazy thing is too, I was... I've been on, I basically do, I like to do things 100%, throw myself into whatever I'm doing. And just before that, I was doing a lot of like martial arts with my friend and I was training really hard. And then basically, I guess what I'm trying to say is like big changes happened in my life where I completely stopped that like and started to really dive like really, really deep into my own life, like facing death, like who do I want to be? Where am I? Am I on track? Like, and you had started on your mission already. You wanna yeah. you wanna talk about what you do because I think it's so amazing what you do. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I have a dog hiking business. I mean, yeah, I have a dog hiking business it's called it's called Collins Pack. It's in uh, I'm in Santa Monica in uh, California, United States. Um, and basically, Caesar Milan. I was obsessed. Whoops. I was upset. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you kill? I dropped something and my dog <laughs> scattered. Um, but I was obsessed with Caesar Milan, 
you know, like crazy when I was, I'm 30 years old now. And uh, when I was, I've been obsessed with season one since I was like 19. And then just obsessed, watch every single episode. And I, before that, I was obsessed with the Crocodile Hunter. So I guess I wasn't choosing those things, but that was just like what I was, and I would always watch National Geographic like every single day, having mm-hmm. everybody, all my housemates were like, so sick of Caesar Milan, you know? And, uh, but anyway, after school, I started a dog hiking business because, um, well, actually because I didn't, I couldn't get another job and I didn't think it was going to work. And it, I guess when you're on your mission, it just, it becomes so easy. And it was just like, I can't believe this is happening. It was like, yeah, it does happen. It happens naturally, right? Like one thing after the other. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, how can you compete with somebody? Not that it's about that really, but it's hard to compete with somebody who would do this every waking moment for free, you know, it's hard to, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's how I already was. So, um, but anyway, so I'm so lucky because there was a big, like everyone in my family lost their house and all these problems happened, which drove me into looking really deeply at my life when I was 23 and I'm 30 now. So that was in uh, like 2011 and, uh, or I'm sorry, like 2010 maybe. And, um, I was like, Oh my God, what's going on? what is going on? So I was already, that really developed my like, who am I going to be? I was hopeless, like hopeless, hopeless, hopeless. It was like, it was like the, your, the beginning of your awakening because it was so hard to go through all these things that it triggered something. Yes. Thinking that there's something else to this higher than this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I had already done really, actually, I, I feel that I, I feel that I had become, had always been a bit awakened to tell you the truth, and like I, I would agree. always make sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'd always, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Because you're yeah, and then, you're an indigo too. You're you've been like you've probably been uh, c- came to this world already awakened with all these information and inner knowledge that you probably couldn't make sense of in your kid's mind. But right. growing up, like it would just make more and more sense to you. Yeah. 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 And, and, uh, and especially cause I would do, I've done psychedelics like for like, you know, mushrooms, uh, and, uh, mainly I do would do mushrooms when I was younger and that really st- like amplified that awakening. But in terms of spirituality, mushrooms didn't really do anything for me like that. It was more like an earth, like earthy yeah. type. Thing. Yeah. yeah. And the spirituality, uh, I mean that kicked in. I really turned to I because I was very rational and I thought I was so smart and cool being like, you know, if God exists, prove it to me. And I really just like to argue and kind of like get to the bottom of things like that. But you, know? you are smart and cool. You are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are. But I'm saying, but like judging somebody else does not make you cool. You no. know? And, and, yeah, right. And I was, I was kind of like putting, pretending I was smarter and cooler than people who believed in God because... Uh, they could improve it, and I, look, I'm so smart, you know. And uh, I mean, anyone could think whatever they want, but but I always, I also just like to argue and just challenge, <laughs> you know, challenge because it helps me get to the bottom of things. It's like, okay, well, I'll just challenge either side. I don't even really care which side I'm, which because at the end of that argument, there's going to be like more truth, you know. Yeah, than, yeah. But but so so I was never like. Um, I I don't think I would have said I believe in God because first I was raised Christian. I believe in God and, mm-hmm. and, and connected to that, you know, and then when I got into high school, I started to question everything. And I was like, well, you can't question God. And I was like, well, why not? I want to question God too. And I questioned everything. Right. And then I, and in my mind, I was like, yeah, I don't think I believe in God, but I didn't really care too much. I was like, whatever, you know? And then when I graduated, I mean, I literally, I was so hopeless. Like I grew up in a wealthy neighborhood and I didn't know that all of our wealth was really not really wealth. It was just like kind of show wealth. It was like mm. there was nothing behind it. It was like a lot of debt, and it was like a it was like a house of cards. And then oh. when two thousand and eight came, the, the house clash. of cards oh. fell down to nothing. My grandparents, who had lived in their same house for like fifty years, my mom grew up in. They had to sell their house. We had to sell the house I grew up in for like twenty years. My dad had to, my parents are divorced. My dad had to sell his other house he bought. My mom moved in with her sister. I had to, my dad moved into a one bedroom in Mammoth for like $800 a month. 
which is like cheaper than a student lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I had to move into like a little workshop. Maybe I, I did. I think I measured it. It was like maybe like six by nine feet, like tiny. So in that, out in my grandparents' new smaller house. So anyway, my point is I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, if, if every, I was like, who's in charge, you know? How can we lose everything, right? Anyway, I don't mean to get wrapped up on that, but I was so, and I was so hopeless. No one knew, no one gave me any guidance. No one told me college did not prepare me for anywhere. Mm, that's right, yeah. In any way. You had to turn into yourself. I had to turn into myself, and so I, so I started to look just around, just for little things, like I was watching The Secret, you know? Then The Secret had a quote by somebody. Then I looked up that person, then I found the book by that guy. Right. Then I, then I watched this, and I read his favorite book, and then all of a sudden, the world started to open up to me, and I realized that I could find people that I didn't know through books and through, right. and I realized also that, that I, don't, I don't learn well through books. I mean, I have crazy ADD, whatever you want to call it. I don't really know. School was like torture to me. I would have nightmares of being in school, up uh, like like yeah. ten after school. I think I just recently had one within like a year, you know. But anyway, once I found out that I could listen to audiobooks and all that stuff, my world started to open and all the spiritual stuff. Anyway, that sorry, that was like uh, I began. I, I realized that my life is my life, and and I didn't know before that. It's like do this, do that, do that, and now it's like you can do whatever you want, and I'm like. Oh, this is going to be awesome. And then when I realized how awesome it is that we control our lives, then I really became the, like a spiritual person. And uh, But the, the spirituality really came from me being in such a position of complete hopelessness right? that I, I really turned to God because like I was like... That's yeah, really you needed yeah. somewhere to turn to or something to turn to to get your answers and just be able to keep going. Yeah, and, and then to, to, be, to be really honest, I also... Uh, I was looking for answers and before the psychedelics had helped me with that. And then for some reason, I was like, nothing could have stopped me. You know, it was with my guidance, I believe. And I, I found DMT, which is like a psychedelic. Now, I don't mean to get off on a, on a tangent or put anything in here that's not supposed to be in here. But I'm just telling the truth that when I smoked DMT, I, it went to a higher vibration. I basically went to another world. And I saw and I received all these downloads, you could say, yeah. information that mm -hmm. took me months and months to process that I was not prepared for. And uh, I saw spiritual beings that were communicating with me. And after that point, I was like, there is zero doubt in my mind. I mean, that changed my life. I was like, there, you know, you could say I believe in this, I believe in that. But at some points, maybe you doubt it. I mean, even at the lo after the longest day, if I'm in the lowest vibrational state, anything, I never – doubt spirituality True. ever yeah because i literally saw and communicated with spirits and received information about my life and i saw how they were working in my life throughout my entire life i was like wow they've been here whatever you want to call it god spiritual guides have been with me this whole time i was like those all those feelings were real you know yeah. it's real the it magic wasn't, yeah it wasn't was in like, your oh, mind yeah yeah Ouch. Gosh, oh my gosh it's all real like it's actually real so I think sometimes the strongest supporters of something are people who used to be critics, and that was that's me in a way, you know, because I used to kind of be critical of the spiritual stuff. Well, that was your like, e that was your ego and all the the false yeah. programming that we all had at one point, and we all had to get rid of. And you have no ego at this time; like you've done so much work, <laughs> like you see you see clearly what's going on and. You're like a true fighter inside, and you know, you just know you're on the right path, right? You know this is where you yeah, need yeah. to be. Yeah, I mean, it's day to day, of course, like, when I'm, when I'm in that high vibrational state, you know, to tell you the truth, let's say I'm going to take a bunch of coffee, maybe some, like, ashwagandha or something like that, Yeah. and, uh, and I go, I go, I get in, like, a trance when I do drumming, or I, I do the, I do boxing and stuff like that, like, punch, like, alone, solo, on the punching bag. When I get into those states, I see everything perfectly clearly and I do know without a doubt I'm on the right path and I just almost, especially recently, we've been talking about it, I know, but with all these changes, I mean, these vibe like, I never used to be aware of what's going on with the stars and like the energy yeah. of the world, mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was like good day, bad day, whatever, it didn't matter, but now I'm like, no, no, there's like things going on, you know, like there, and, and just recently, especially like I've been receiving in these crazy states where I'm almost crying. I mean, I do cry in gratitude, just like 
just crazy. And I, I do know 100% I'm on the right path. And they show me signs with all the numbers. The numbers yes, are yeah. literally, literally insane. Just insane. Did you find but, that all of that like got deeper or increased after you met your twin? Absolutely. Yeah, it, it activated but, a bunch of things and then you just kept going, yeah, yeah. not being too sure what it was at first. And then you, you realize that that's what it is. And then you just go yeah. on about your, your life. Yeah. Yeah. By a multiple of probably three or four, which is a lot. Right. I mean, like, I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing that out there, but Oh, I want to talk about this. This is see now I'm wondering, I'm like, am I getting guided to talk about this? Cause I have a feeling like I'm supposed to talk about it. Whereas before I, I wouldn't make those connections, you know, but right now, so I, this is something I want to talk about. If you don't mind. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So, so before I was guided, I, I work with the dogs, you know, but I, I put in so much work. I put in four years of basically isolation. I went on this kind of like spiritual retreat. Like I need to get away from all of like normal life, like no TV. Like what was I doing? You know that? And I kind of had this awakening, but then it got to the point where I was too separated from the world and kind right. of like, Lo you know, not lonely, but like an outsider and like almost, yeah. uh, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, but not wanting to connect to anyone isolated. anymore. Yeah, isolated. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It's too isolated. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's okay probably for periods of time, but like you don't want to die alone, like in a, in, in like a big house alone. You know, you don't want to be like right. eating like dinner when you're eight years right. old, like across from like nobody. You know what I mean? And I, had, I started to have those visions in my mind. And I was like, okay, I need to interact in some way. So now I'm like figuring out how to combine both, you know? But I have a great friend who was a childhood friend who we've been like friends and then we like don't like each other and then we're friends. We actually got into a fight the first time we met because he's like a warrior type of personality yeah. and he's a professional fighter now and uh, he came back into my life really strong. He's like, dude, I need you around me right now because he's going to, he was a jujitsu uh, world champion. Okay. He's really good. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, my point is uh, <laughs> there's a long story. I always get inside. But basically, he came into my life. He's like, I'm going to be doing MMA. And this is a big deal for me. And basically, I need someone like you around me. Like, dude, I need the strength of our connection. And uh, at the time, I was like, I was being guided. I feel like I was like, go 100% into this right now. So I, I just went into it. So I started, I went back into the group. I started training jujitsu really a lot, boxing a lot, all the MMA stuff, helping my friend. And it felt great to have that connection with my friend. My point is, that reached some this is leading up to the twin flame thing. And I think that prepared me because we had such an a f open relationship. We're like, yeah, when this guy does this, how do you feel? And this and that. And like just so open about behind the scenes what mm -hmm. we're actually doing, you know, mm -hmm. with no ego. And we had a communication that was so much like anytime, like if he's out doing the coolest thing at the biggest event with some big thing happening, he texts me or call me right then, you know, put – so like very respect, like a lot of respect and a lot of love and a lot of like communication in a relationship as a friendship that I, that, that taught me so much. And I felt like that was preparing me for meeting her to tell yeah, you the truth. Right. We all have that person, whether yeah. it's through a friend, through a relationship involving feelings and emotions or what some people will call the false twin. We all have that phase where we get prepared. For what's coming because if we don't get that I think I'd still be on the floor crying or something or being traumatized because it's too intense right yeah 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 that prepared me a lot and I think I'm like dude thank you so much I can't, <laughs> I'm like, dude, that was so cool that helped me so much you know because like I was saying before just really shortly me and him we have a relationship where like if we're doing something together, it's all good. It's it's cool. But at some point, I'm kind of like, well, I'm not going to be you and you're not going to be me. So we kind of we kind of butt heads and then we kind of go our own ways. And that's kind of the love behind it all is like right. the, the freedom that we can come together and do things together. Right. But at some point, you know, like I don't want to be next to him because he, we're too similar, you know, so we mm -hmm. have to repel each other. Mm -hmm. and, and we both know that. So that's that's even cooler. It's kind of like, you know, two opponents when they get into a problem. They love each other after the fight, but then like they're not going to be loving each other forever, you know? <laughs> right, right. But, and then separate. But anyway, that's my point is um, it that that relationship was helping me a lot in a lot of ways, and it was also bringing me out and meeting a lot of girls, which was awesome. I mean, I love to just go out and to tell you the truth, I didn't realize when I was younger, I really didn't care. I mean, I was 
you know, like crazy high libido as a young teenager, right? Mm -hmm. And as I started to get older, I started to realize like, you know, I just started to get, we had already spoken about this, but I started to get like much more, especially after I had that those problems in my life and was taking control of my whole life, extremely selective. I was like, dude, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be with a girl and then feel worse the next day. It made no sense to me. I'm like, if I'm not going to eat donuts, it's like you eat a donut and it tastes good and then you feel bad for a week or whatever, right? Right. Not a week. Right. But I, I was, I was, I was purifying my whole life and that includes relationships with girls or just hooking up with girls. And I was like, dude, I don't want to do that where I feel bad. Mm -hmm. You know, like, so I, I, I think that's relevant in the sense that like I was becoming more like sexually pure in a way. And I was like, but my other friends are not doing that. You know? Right, right. And they're probably <laughs> like, thinking, what the hell are you doing there? But what you just said is so beautiful because it's part of the path. And a lot of people wonder what happens to them when that happens. It happened to me too before I met my twin and to a lot of people. So it, thank you for sharing that. It's pretty amazing that you're talking about your your own life like that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but my other friend, but you know, my other friend is the exact opposite, right? My friend I'm talking about. So he's out here like doing all this. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I don't even want to do that, you know? Like I wanted, I was becoming very clear. I was like, I want to meet girls that I have a connection with and right. go to the highest, highest, highest levels, you know? Right. I don't want, want any of this like unconscious girl not knowing what she's doing and I push her or like, or she's like, okay, yeah, let's do this and that. And she doesn't even know what she's doing. I'm like, you don't even know what you're doing. You're not even like here so that not, we cannot go to this high level because you're not even like on that, capable of going to that level, you know? So I was becoming very clear that I only wanted those like very high level connections and those very high level experiences. And so we would go out, you know, all over the place. And I, that was tons of fun. This is, this is relevant, I feel like, because um, it, it kind of leads up to uh, and, me, meet, me meeting her. Yeah. Yeah. And how long before meeting her was that? Like a few years, well, I mean, few months? Yeah. We started to hang out uh, like late 2015. Okay. I'd say like late 2015, really to like late 2016, so about a year. Okay. And then and then towards the end of that, I met her actually. So I have Tinder, right? But Tinder, I'm a very spirit. I'm a very like connecting. I can tell very quickly. I get to the bottom of it. Like I'm not gonna BS and I'm not gonna pretend I'm somebody I'm not. So I could go up to girls if and I could tell if I have that connection with them. Right. Kind of like who. I kind of like shake them up and see if they fall apart. You know, I'm like, yeah. who are you and that, you know, and I press all these buttons and kind of like get to the bottom of it. You know, like if you're not, if it's not right, let's find out within 20 seconds. You know, I don't want to go on like a date with a girl and be like, share a little bit at a time and go on like three or four dates and then be like, oh no, I don't think this is right. You know, I just want to know immediately, you know? Right. And so that's what I was doing really with, uh, we would go out. And I was, I was like, which ones do I like? Which ones? And I always like the like very confident girls who have this like attitude because I like to go up and kind of like, <laughs> like confront them and like kind of break that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> it was very fun for me, you know. I was like, but uh, <laughs> but 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 I was really looking for that connection. To tell you the truth, and um, so uh, uh, you know, a couple times. I found some girls like that, which was really cool, and that was very positive and and good. But um, but oh well, I guess I'm saying on, on I, I started to say on Tinder, on I had Tinder, Tinder. Yeah. I was looking, yeah, and I was looking at all these things, but Tinder never. I it just I was like, I don't know. Like you're not gonna be able to understand me through a photo of, on Tinder, you know? Like well, if if <laughs> it, if it just you're... wasn't happening for me. It just wasn't happening. Some people are able to read the energy off of a picture and they know right away. So, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe that's the wrong excuse then. But for whatever reason, it, it just was not happening. Right. And in the girls, almost all the girls, I was like, yeah, almost. I know she's hot on paper. Technically, she's hot. But, but to me, to, yeah, to me, hot was like not physical. It's like the whole thing. It's like I don't just want the body. You, you know, want the mind yeah, yeah, and I, the emotions. Yeah, I, yeah. Yes, exactly. I cannot separate. 
a body from a person. You know, I just cannot separate that. So like, I remember even as a kid, people would be like, oh, that model, she's so hot. She's a 10. But to me, I, if I don't feel that something, then it's like, it, I don't feel it. And it's as yeah. simple as that. And you don't go it's, into it. Yeah, she could be a four to me, even yeah. though physically she's really attractive or whatever, you know. Whereas, you know, yeah. But um, so um, I it got me way into like preparing to be – with a man, twin. yeah, 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 to be, yeah, yeah, and because I haven't had a girlfriend, we've talked about this, you know, all this, but other people don't. Know. But I'm I'm 30 now. I haven't had a girlfriend since I was 15. I've had one girl. I used to fall in love with all these people. Like I used, I fell in love with like the the Roger Rabbit, like redheaded girl. And when I would find, <laughs> when I would find out, it's like I was like, mommy, why can't I want to meet her? Like that's all I want for my birthday. It's like, sweetheart, she doesn't even exist. <laughs> she's, right. She's a cartoon. But anyway, I was like always fall in love as a kid and then I fell in love with my first girlfriend and then like we talked about she hooked up with like all, all my friends basically, which was uh, – and after that I was like, uh, yeah, I was like I just – it was like my – I was incapable of forming connections after that and I was pretty much cold-hearted to like every single girl and then I think I actually caused a lot of harm to other girls who were like, why can't you <laughs> like mm-hmm. – like why are you – treat you know, they would kind of fall for me and I was like – incapable of falling for them but that's just a little history on me on 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 me and how not prepared I was for any sort of relationship and and I would always look at everybody like because I saw dependent relationships around me and I I, Mm -hmm. I would make fun of them and kind of be like you know I don't need any pride myself on not needing anybody and just be like yeah I would probably that was totally part of my identity I don't need anybody and Mm. I it was a huge part of my identity and uh just yeah, it was in a, in a part of my pride that I don't need anybody and and uh, I don't need a relationship because to me, girls like a girl would be like, oh, like why can't we be in a relationship? I'm like, because we're just gonna have to break up, you know? And like, why? <laughs> <laughs> like, why even put ourselves through that? Like, right? Like, let me let me do this. Okay, we're in a relationship. Okay, I have something to talk about. We're gonna need to break up immediately. <laughs> you know, like because it just I couldn't handle that. Like. The pain, the the pain of yeah. just thinking about it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something about that. I was like, I just don't want to have to break up, really. But you know, you did have a blockage probably from that relationship and the cheating yeah. and all that. So, yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. And uh, but so that was a bit of my psychology, you know. But and I and I knew this, and I was like, well, Colin, let's get real, you know. Like, if you want to have a wife someday, like, you have no idea what you're doing. You you haven't been in a relationship in your you've been in a relationship when you're 15 years old. Yeah. So I I started reading all these books about like a lot of it was pickup artist stuff, but I I took it, I, I don't take everything like I know that everything has some truth in it and some not truth, and I was just looking for the truth, you know, like what do women actually want, this and that. And uh, what a woman want in a relationship, what a woman want when you talk to them. And I was just, I have no shame about like just actually learning and being like, I don't know because none of us know when we're born. So it's like, if, if I was unwilling to admit that I didn't know, then I would just never know as there opposed to being like, I don't know now, but I'm going to learn it. You know, my self-esteem is not based on what I know. It's a gro- growth mindset versus a fixed mindset, right? It's like my self-esteem is based on my confidence that I can learn, you know? And uh, so, and on I, the fact that you didn't look at it, look at it from an ego point of view, because if you had been in your ego, you would have been, you know, I don't care about this, you know, the I don't want to work on this, but you did choose to do the work, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're in your ego like that, then you're going to get smacked in the head by life because life doesn't care if you think you have an ego or not. I mean, there you go. There you go. I have been smacked in the head. Oh, you think you're so cool? Well, now you're out. And you're living in your grandparents and you have nothing. You don't know how to survive. You don't know how to make money. You're a loser now. What are you going to do now? You know? Yeah. It's like if, if you're not willing to grow, then uh, don't worry. You're going to get you're get knocked out by life. So Yeah, because so if, <laughs> if, if you don't want to understand it the first time or the second time, well, yes. yeah, it's coming for you. And it's going to be yeah. harder. <laughs> yeah. That's a self-correcting uh, mechanism. You know? You're yeah. going to get smacked. You're going to get smacked. You just get to determine how hard you're going to get smacked. <laughs> but, <laughs> But so I was, I was honestly really preparing for like, cause I wanted to be the man for 
whoever I was with. And in my mind at the time, to tell you the truth, I was going to just go out and date the hottest girls, like just the girls that I wanted, just the creme de la creme, you know, yeah. anything I wanted. But there, w I didn't have any idea or any any interest in dating one girl, really. But I really did want to have high level connections with really hot, hot in my mind, girls, and that would probably be hot and inside and out, you know. But um, for lack of a better way of saying it, hot, mm -hmm. I don't know. What it means, but you know, the, the the attraction is there. But um, so I was really preparing, and and my friend, the relationship with my friend, because he brought me out back into the world, and since he. He has this big circle of people who respect him and want to do favors with, for him. So anywhere we're going, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, okay, just one more person can come into the club or, or the after party or whatever. He's like, no, no, no. This is my friend. He's coming too. They're like, no, no, he can't come. They're like, yeah, no, he can't come. <laughs> so he's getting me in everywhere, right? It was so much fun. It was so hilarious. So we got – we were just out and that really got me talking to all these girls and really had that, that – the feminine on my mind a lot. And uh, so I was really preparing for that. And I was like – you know, if, because I, I realized, like I said, I'm totally, completely not prepared for a relationship. I have no idea what women are like. I have no friends who are women. Well, that's not true. I have some who kind of reach out to me for that, like, masculine, like, support in a right. way, but it's very yeah. distant. And in terms of, like, an actual relationship, like, basically zero experience. I mean, I talk to my mom all the time, but that's it. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't say that's a Hi, mom. <laughs> relationship experience. But, this is very roundabout, but this is leading up. Okay, now now the twin flame starts. Okay, all the background's done. Here we go. There we go. Welcome to the present. Welcome <laughs> to the somewhat present. Yeah, this is last November. Okay, so Tinder. I met her on Tinder, and I was like, I had just met this other girl, and I'd make all these little mistakes, and I was like very attentive to the mistakes, and the mistakes were mainly pretending to be a little cooler than I am, somebody that I'm not. And I was like, dude, I'm not going to make those mistakes any again. And I felt like I met this girl right before her just so I can make these mistakes and correct them and just be who I really am. Right. Then I, I saw her. I just saw her photos. Like you were just saying, you could read the energy. And I was like, man, I was like, dude, I wonder if I just met that other girl so I can make mistakes so I can get it right with this girl, you know. And then we set up a date really quickly. It was so easy. And you know how when things are right, they're just so easy. It was just so easy. We set up a date, and then I actually postponed it. I asked if we could postpone it because I was going to do a jiu-jitsu competition. And she was like, no problem, maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And in my mind, I was thinking like two weeks later. I waited a little bit too long. She, uh, And then she got really – I realized she liked me because she wouldn't respond to me because I, I made her wait a little too long. Right. And she got like, flustered. And then I found out later she deleted Tinder. Anyway – Here's when the magic begins. That was in November of 2016. All of a sudden, in like April of 2017, um, out of nowhere, see, it's so, it's so, I'm trying to do this in a way that's like not crazy long, but there's so much I could talk about. Well, well, if it's too long, yeah. we're going to do a part two. That's not a problem. Okay. If you want to come back, that is. But <laughs> at that time in April, you were not on t Tinder anymore, right? Or were I you? I, I think I was, but I wasn't. But she I wasn't. Was, was, but you didn't know that she wasn't. I don't think she was, no. I mean, here's what happened really quickly. The end of that, me training and going out and with my friend and all that stuff, I, I had basically like a caffeine overdose. He gave me a bag of caffeine. I didn't know how much was what. I think I had like five or 6,000 milligrams of caffeine on an empty stomach. And I almost like felt like I had a heart attack. I mean, for 10 hours, I was like throwing up and like oh. sick, the, well, the worst I've ever felt in my life. I mean, I thought I was going to die basically. In my, mm. And that changed everything for me because it felt like it was a near-death experience. That was in December of January – or I'm sorry, December of 2016. From that moment, I never went back to the academy to train again. And I was like, what am I doing? And I was like just started to go deep, 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 deep. Then I started to read like crazy and go into this really like, this is all leading up to me meeting her, I think, you know, seeing her again. Right. Or, and that, or and that was a part of your dark night of the soul. You probably went through a roller coaster of emotion, not understanding yeah. what was going on. Yeah, yeah. And so, so 
I started to get really, and I was telling my mom like around like February, March, I was like, mom, I think I'm ready to basically come out of the spiritual closet for lack of a better way of putting it, you know, Mm -hmm. like ready to not be a brand, you know, ready to just live like completely openly about all of these things that might not be considered normal, like believing in spiritual things, like actually believing in spirits and spirit guides and things like that. A lot of people would consider that not normal and kind of want to hide that, you know? And I was like, mom, something's happening. Like something's happening to me. Like I'm going through some sort of thing. I feel so connected to everyone. I feel no separation. I was, I was, I would bike around and I'd like feel what everyone's feeling. And I'm like, something is happening. I mean, I've had spiritual things happen, but I was like going to another level. And then I just had this really, Oh, and I started listening to this person. Magenta Pixie actually is her name on YouTube. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I bought her book called something I forgot but um it had this thing about twin flames and I remember reading the first part was about twin flames and I was like I was like okay it, it, it wasn't on my I was just like okay like I don't I don't care about that you know I was like I don't care. I just didn't care about twin flames I just didn't care about it and then but it introduced the concept to my mind and mm. then it started and then I started to see before I met my twin I started to see 11 11 everywhere and I was like mom I'm seeing 11 11 mm. everywhere I saw this before I even got in contact with her again yeah and be- before I even knew what that meant that's right. why when I looked up later I was like oh my gosh this is insane this is crazy what's happening um and it's usually how it happens it happened to me too like I was seeing seeing 11 11 years before meeting my twin I just didn't know I knew it meant something I didn't know what it meant Every day I would see 11, 11 a.m. Every day. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, it, yeah, it's crazy. And then here's here's the really crazy. I mean, this is a, a, a pretty crazy short condensed period, right? So all of a sudden I'm watching Magenta Pixie, da, da, da. And then I, and then I watched, I tried to get a reading and I couldn't find her information. So I got a reading from her friend, actually. This was a week before. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a day before. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is the exact day that I got in touch. No way. My, again, yes. Like a few hours day. before. Yes. Oh my god. This is this is on a Saturday, right? I think it was. I could look it up. I should have these dates for memorized. It was like it was like April fifteenth or something like that, right? I'll just look it up right here. But um, yeah, it must have been. Uh, yeah, it was April fifteenth. Yeah, no, I guess I already did have it memorized. But um. <laughs> April 15th. And she's like, okay, hold on. We well, did a reading. It was great. Da, da, da. And then she's like, okay, hold on. Your guides want me to give you this energy. And she's like, could you just sit back and like receive this energy? And she's like, how do you feel? I was like, I feel, I, I mean, I felt a little different. I mean, I felt a little bit of a tingle. I did, but you know, it didn't feel much different. She's like, to tell you the truth, they have never asked me to do that for someone. And I've been doing this a really long time. She's like an old lady. You know, she's like, So I was like, oh, that's cool. Did she see or say anything about your twin? Did she tell you? No. Okay. No. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, she's not, she doesn't have a twin phone. I didn't know anything about the twin phone right. thing. Or, you know, I wasn't even on anywhere on my mind. In my mind, I was not looking for a girl. I, in my mind, I was going to go get the hottest girls and do the, all this and that mm. and have, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Have like one fill in a little bit different part of me me and have all these great experiences right well that, that all changed when I met her I mean when I met her I was like okay that whole other plan that's out of the window down you know, the like, drain that, down the drain that, it's done down the, that's that's done yeah like in an instant I was like she is everything like why would I want all these different people to fill in just a little part when I could have one person fill every single part Exactly. I mean, I didn't even realize I needed a part of me filled. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't even realize I was missing anything. I don't think I am necessarily missing anything, but she filled my heart with like a way that like I can't even, I didn't know needed filling, you know? Or existed, right? Like, Yeah, I didn't know it was, yeah. Mm. And I'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm like, like I said, I pride myself. I'm like, well, I'm independent and I can do this, everything by myself. Well, I'm learning that's great to be like that attitude, but I mean, the attitude of self-confidence is great, but we, we do need other people, you know, and, and I'm learning all that, you know, which is, which is good too. But, uh, okay. So I got that reading. They gave me the energy. This was a Saturday morning that night. 
I was not going on Facebook very often, but I was on Facebook Messenger. I just looked at it, and all of a sudden, I saw her name lit up with a little dot next to it, like so-and-so is online, and she was like number one or two on, on the list. Now, here's the thing. I never friend requested her. I didn't even know her last name. Right. And, uh, and I usually pretty much just accept everyone's friend requests, but mm-hmm. I do look at their na- I look at their names, you know, like, who is it? Okay, yeah, whatever, you can be my friend. And then... <laughs> <laughs> can I be your friend? <laughs> <laughs> can I be friend? Yeah, sure. <laughs> What's the worst thing that can happen? I don't know. I don't, but but uh, <laughs> make me feel so popular. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, but my point is, if she had friend requested me, I would have looked at her name before I accepted it. Right. And I never, I never saw that. So all of a sudden, she's right in front of me, and I had never. So that alone makes no sense. On a 3D level, you could say no, it was exactly. It was just a just very no powerful sense. synchronicity. It was meant yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, and I'm very attuned in in paying attention to all those things. Mm. And uh, my relationship with my my other my friend before that, the the MMA fighter, that got me. We were very much like on the spiritual level, talking about spreading the love and like that. So that was even helping me prepare even more and even focusing even more on that. So I was like, how? I was like, you got to be kidding me. I was like, how is this person right in front of my eyes, right? So I, I sent her like a message. I was like, hey, I remember you. Like, what the hell happened? You know? <laughs> no, no, I didn't say what the hell happened. But, uh, and then we started talking, joking around a little, a little bit. And I was like, uh, you know, I was like, are you stalking me? Da, da, da. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Blah, blah. Anyway, I was like, well, I'd love to see you. Da, da. Something, I don't know, something really cool, I'm sure. That I, and uh next weekend if you want to get together she's like okay and it was just so easy and i was like dude that's awesome and then immediately we 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 had a date a date set up for the next saturday right and then i was like i was like what's going on and then so that was on a saturday then like thursday four days later i had a dream like a dream i've never had before okay i was driving and it felt like i was getting sucked out into the middle of the ocean in my, my whole, it was like the world was ending and we were getting sucked into a vortex and like I was, I was like getting electrocuted and I was like, oh, and like the, all mm-hmm. of this energy was pulsing through my body, just crazy. And it was, I think I was like on my back with my arms and legs straight out and I was like, I don't know how long it lasted, but I like woke up and I was like still happening. Like I was like, whoa. And I, and I remember just laying there just like looking around and I was like, uh, that was something, you know? I was yeah. like, what was that? What the hell just happened? Yeah, what the hell was that? Yeah. And, uh, and then I didn't think anything of it because how am I supposed to connect that? I don't know what it was, you know? Yeah, you went on about your day, not thinking yeah, about yeah. it. And did yeah. you did you, make, uh, did you make sense of it later on? Well, after I had all these other million crazy things happening. Yeah. Yeah, I made sense of it. But then also that Friday, right before I met her, I called just an old kind of like father figure I had who we we're totally on different pages in life. So I hadn't seen him in like four years and my heart was just beginning to open a little bit, right? Okay. And I, and I saw him and that was great. Anyway, I saw her the next day and that's when uh, now we're on video two maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but I'll just – Yeah, I'll that would speak. be – yeah, yeah. Let's do this on video two. Like. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll just, I just want to say quickly before I forget, actually, I, there's no way I'll forget, but we met at a coffee bean, right? Because I had my whole little game plan. We were going to meet at a coffee bean, get her all hyped up on dopamine and norepinephrine. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and then go all around and it worked out great. It was fantastic. But my, I'll just, I'll just leave it with this a little teaser, which is, uh, <laughs> which is we, we, so we pulled up or I pulled up, I was Three minutes late. I still remember. How could I do that? Oh my gosh! How could I? How could I? And uh, the first thing we did, we pu- we pulled up, and she got some like a tea, and I got a coffee. And um, he's like, "Okay, that'll be five dollars." And I was like, uh, "That's interesting. That rarely happens when you when you like when do you pull up and and it's an even number? I mean, right. it's almost like." Right. 
Never. It's never, you know. And then well, that was just the beginning of the numbers and all the crazy stuff. Um, can we swear, by the way? Can we say shit? What? Can, <laughs> can we, we swear? <laughs> <laughs> you did ask me, can I swear? Yes, you can. Yeah. Yes, Not you may. <laughs> That's the beginning of all the crazy shit that was going on. And, uh, and then that night was just awesome. And uh, by the end of that night, she was, she was, she was like, She knew, right? But she wouldn't I admit she, it. She, I think she knew before I knew because I was just like, you know, on a roll. I mean, not on a roll. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But I was, you know, I, I, what the hell is that kind of mood, right? Was yeah, that, yeah, no, no. was this energy? No, oh, yeah, no, no, no. What I'm saying is like, I was like, I know this is awesome, you know, mm -hmm. but I've, I've had some things be fairly awesome and easy before, mm -hmm. but but not not as cool as this but um but i think she was realizing to tell you the truth faster than i was realizing and that's why those fears kicked in i'm pretty sure because yeah she was like no no and i saw visions of this i started i've been seeing like visions you know it's like they give me like an understanding of the actual feeling right. i don't know if vision is the well, right word but well like, they gave you an understanding of what's really going on in the higher realms Yeah, yeah. And Outside I, of the 3D illusion, because that's all an illusion, so. Yeah, yeah. They let me see, or I'm sorry, they let me feel how she was feeling relative right. to how I, I was feeling. Right. And then, like, in or, my question, here's my, my it, it, they answered my question. My question was, like, why was she falling apart so hard, or why was she so afraid? And what they did, you know, the spirit guides or whatever you could say, I don't know. Victor. Exactly. Yeah, Victor, my spirit. <laughs> um, that's the name of my spirit guide, apparently, for everyone who's listening. But, uh, but yeah, so my man Victor or whoever, uh, they let me see. They're like, okay, you want to know why she was afraid? We will let you understand why. Now, this is, I'm kind of maybe making that explanation up, but that's what it felt like to me. And it, it showed me how she was feeling relative to how I was feeling. And I didn't realize how hard she was falling. I mean, she was looking at me the whole night. She was following me everywhere. Wherever I led her, she would follow me, like with like holding hands underneath my arm, protecting her, kissing her. Every now and then I'd stop and just like, we'd kiss. And it was just like, she was falling in love, like right then. And in my mind, I was a little bit oblivious to that, more like a typical masculine energy I guess you could say just like oh yeah yeah and she was like extremely hyper conscious examining every single thing I was saying looking at me like is this all true and I think she was like this has to be too good to be true because I think that's what she was thinking but but it let me feel how she was feeling and she was like oh my gosh I'm falling like, right like a free fall but and I don't think you were I don't think he, that was true that was a true vision because something similar happened to me too when I first met my twin I had visions while I was with him and I didn't know wh what they were until like a few minutes later I was like oh okay that's him it's not me and it's just to validate what's going on it's yeah. just to let you know you know this is what's going on on don't freak out don't run away just you know stay on the path Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if it could help any, because I don't know the answers, obviously. I'm just like, what's going on, kind of also. <laughs> But uh, if I could help anybody who's like wondering what like a man is thinking, uh, this is one perspective, obviously, because I'm not, I'm only one person, but this might help. You Are know. you sure you're only I'm, one person? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I, I can't harm me. You never know. <laughs> With the strength of an army. <laughs> well, so you were saying if you if people need help or if they have questions, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying I'm trying to help. What I, what I'm saying is like I don't know the answer, you know. But oh, but we could also talk about those twins we found out about. I started to be attracted to all these t like famous twin flame couples, and uh, or famous for lack of a better word, like publicly known, right? Who. And so those are the people out. So then you kind of get to pick and choose who's going to be your role model. I mean, that's the way I feel it. Obviously, everyone's going to be guided toward their own thing, probably. But yes, I, I'm, I'm being guided very clearly, like so strongly toward 
really one specific twin flame couple who I think in my it must be like, look, Colin, like these are the ones who are going to help you, who are going to give you the blueprint. Right. But we could, we could talk about all those ones we found out about, and then different people might be like, you know, might just start some little chain reaction where mm-hmm. they're like, oh, and then they get guided toward, you know, because if you could look, if you could see it, I feel like I think we'd create our reality with our our thoughts and just constantly, constantly pushing on this on the vision. Right. And if you could see the vision of, because I don't want my role model to be somebody who has it didn't work out with, you know, I want it to be someone who's, it's amazing with. The, the, yeah. And, and the real deal and who has been yeah. through some hardships and who's, yeah. you know, have been through it all basically so that the answers are real, not made up, not learned from a book or from someone else, but learned the hard way. Right. Yeah. Living it. It's like, if yeah. you're living it, yeah. you know, then, then it's real. You know, I, I want to, I don't want to listen to somebody who's poor about how to make money or something like that, you know? There you go, exactly. So so, so I, I I just, I'm trying to kind of say this because I'm not with her yet. Even though I feel, I have faith in myself and I have faith in what I feel I know and how she feels, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in a crazy rush or anything like that, but I just want to be very clear that like, I don't think I'm the person to look to. I mean, I am not the person to look to because if I'm not with my twin flame, then uh, in my opinion... No one should be looking to me for that, you know. So I just wanted to clarify. I know that I know that I'm not a person to be looking to, and uh, but I'm just saying I'm looking toward those people, uh, and we could talk about that maybe next time. The, the couples we right, found, right, you know, right, right. Who I, uh, yeah, so you know? for now, if anybody has any questions, they can you can post them as a comment, and next time we come around, we'll we'll answer the questions. And uh, do you mind if people reach out to you on your? Uh, yeah, on my what? <laughs> <laughs> on my what? I don't have anything. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, they could, uh, you know what? You could, I mean, you, you could email me if you want. So if you want to reach out to Colin, you can send him an email. Yeah, sure. My email is uh, Colin with one L, C-O-L-I-N, at uh, collinspack.com. C-O-L-I-N at collinspack, so C-O-L-I-N-S-P-A-C-K dot com and uh you know if there's something i can do i will be more than happy to help you if it's something i don't know the answer to i'm gonna say yeah nah nah nah, i can't help you (laughs) (laughs) and if you would like to book a reading with me you can do so on my facebook page indigo girls readings or uh using my email indigo girl 555 at gmail.com so thank you for being here thank you colin my pleasure And we'll talk again. You'll be back, right? Oh, of course. I mean, we're going to be talking all the time anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, it's uh, it's fun to have like... I'll be here. Great. So, see you next time. Bye. All right. Bye.